So you just got yourself a new PoE security camera system, or you're looking to get one, but you happen to have a building that's far away from the main location that your MVR is gonna be located at. How do you go and connect a PoE camera to the system without a direct wire connecting into it? Well, luckily it is possible with the help of a wireless bridge. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to connect a PoE security camera to an NVR when you can't physically connect them together through the use of Ubiquiti's Lightbeam 5ACs. I'm gonna be showing you how to configure the light beams. I'm gonna be showing you the network setup, how to get the cameras connected and how to get everything situated in the end. So hopefully by the end of this video, you should be able to connect your PoE cameras yourself as well to your system without a physical connection between the two. So with that said, let's get these unboxed and configured. Eh, 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 sorry, not that quick to unbox these. I do wanna mention before opening these, the things that you will need in order for this to work. Of course, you will need the PoE camera and the NVR system, but I'm assuming you've already got that. If you want some good recommendations for some, I would check out these two videos up here that I've made about Reolink systems in the past. But um, you will need two radios, so whether it be from Ubiquiti or not, does not matter. But as I already mentioned, I've got the Lightbeam AC Gen 2s here. You'll also need a PoE compatible switch. This one I picked up from Amazon and it is the Yuan Lei, looks kind of sketch, but it is a PoE compatible gigabit switch and it is the model YS2041G-P. And the reason I picked this one up is because it's compatible with both IEEE 802.3 AT and AF PoE standards. But aside from that, that is all you're gonna need aside from some ethernet cables. So with that said, let's get this open. With everything out of the box, the only additional thing you'll need is a Phillips head screwdriver to get everything assembled. And with everything assembled, now all we need to do is repeat this times two with the second one, and then it's ready to get configured. So just unscrew that, which is where you can access the ethernet port. This ethernet port should have a cord going between it and the PoE injector. You should plug into the PoE port right here, the red one, and then the LAN side will go and plug into either a router or a switch. These both need to be plugged into the same network that your computer can access for now but we'll later move them to somewhere else. Well, I understand this looks jank. Here is the setup for getting this configured. First of all, I've got just a switch here because I don't wanna connect these into my own network because this will be going on to a different network entirely. So I just have a switch here in order to communicate between the two devices. Then I've got the PoE injectors, as I already mentioned. The red goes to the dishes both sides and then the blue line on both sides is the one that's connected into the LAN port and that's the one that goes into the switch. That's the case on both sides. However, I have this left side unplugged right now because I just want to configure this dish. So with that plugged in, this black line goes and runs to my laptop. With my laptop connected into this temporary network, you will need to go and configure your LAN port to be a static IP that falls in the 192.168.1. whatever IP address you want to choose, except for it cannot be .20 because that is the standard configuration IP of both of these devices. So once you've statically set your IP, all you got to do is open up a web browser and go to 192.168.1.20, hit enter. You'll have to go past this, accept the risk. And from here, you'll be granted with the setup screen for your device. Now, this is why we wanna only plug in one radio at this time, because if you plug in both at the same time, then you're gonna have some difficulties trying to find this setup page. So with that said, choose your location, your language, you're gonna have to agree to the terms. And then from here, create a super strong username and password. Once you've done that, you'll be greeted with the dashboard and you're gonna need to go over to the network tab, go down to the management network settings and from here, change the standard 
IP address to whatever falls onto your own network. In my case, I am on the 192.168.1 subnet, so I'm gonna change this to .220 instead, and otherwise everything else here is fine. Click Save Changes, and then once the changes have applied, you're gonna to have to go back and it should redirect you to the new management URL. But when it redirects to that new URL, if you're unable to access the page, it's very likely that if you changed your network IP from 192.168.1 to something else, like to say 10.0.0. something, make sure you go into your computer LAN settings and change your static IP address to be something that's on that subnet then, and then you should be able to access it. And just like that, it brought me to the new IP that I just changed to. Because the management URL did just change, you will have to re-log in to the interface. Then from here, go to the wireless tab and turn on the access point settings. You'll then need to go and change the SSID as well as the wireless password for the radio itself. This is not the same as the management URL password, so you can change this to whatever you want. Save those changes, and once they've applied, the screen should refresh. And while we're waiting on that, go ahead and take the other LAN port from your other radio and plug that into your switch or router, and make sure that goes up with the uplink. You should now be able to go to 1.20 once again, and this will get you into the new radio. Click the Accept button, and we'll go through the same screen as before. This time in the network, you're gonna to have to go and make sure you change your IP address to something different. It cannot be the exact same as what the last one was. So in this case, I'm making this 221 instead of 220. Everything else looks good. Save changes. You're gonna to have to wait for the page to refresh. Then once the network information for the new radio has changed and successfully changed, you're gonna to wanna to go back to your original tab for the first radio that we set up. And this is the one that we turned on the access point. Looks all good, looks like everything's saved. So go back to your second radio. And on this one, instead of when we go to the wireless page, turning on access point mode, leave that off. And this time we're gonna type in that SSID that we just typed in before. Then down under the wireless security, type in the password that you chose. Click Save Changes. And the changes have applied. From here you should be able to go to the dashboard and soon you should see that these two radios will connect and they'll start communicating with one another. A few moments later. And just like that, as you can see, we've now got the local unit as well as the remote here in the dashboard, which is good. That means everything is set up properly and we are connected. If you're having issues with this popping up, just simply power cycle both of the radios and once they come back on, they should be able to locate once one another. And something that's great about the way that we're doing it here is that if you have more than one location that you wanna add a camera to, like I do in my case, I've got two buildings, external buildings that I wanna to go to, you can go and configure an additional remote unit, similar to like we did the second one, and that way it can connect to the access point as well. So you're able to connect multiple locations to the same NVR network, which is what this first unit is, then you can go and have multiple cameras in multiple locations. So now with both of the radios set up, there's really not much else to do as far as the configuration of these go, but the only other thing that we're gonna to need to talk about now is how we set up the network so then everything is connected together because I feel like it's easier to see it right here in front of me now than to go and show you it in the field, but I'll also show you it once I have it set up in my case as well. And then from there, we'll just be able to add the cameras to the NVR and then we should be all set. All right, so to explain all this, I apologize about the mess and ignore everything that's down there because that's mostly power, but this is the entire setup, the grand scheme of what you are going for. So we've got the NVR here, which is what records all the video and is on the network to record the IP cameras. We've got a router, and this is a must. You must have a router somewhere in the network that the NVR is connected to, whether it be directly or somewhere else that this is connected to a switch maybe, which is connected to the router. There just has to be a DHCP server on the network because the NVR does not uh, do that through the LAN port itself. Then we've got the um, main access point here. So this is the first one that we configured. That runs into its PoE injector right there. 
And then on the other side, this is completely disconnected. This is wirelessly connected to the other section over there. Then we have the subscriber remote radio over here, and that is connected into its PoE injector, which then goes into this PoE switch that I mentioned earlier. And then from there, we've got the camera, which then can plug into this PoE switch. And the beautiful thing about this is that you can plug as many cameras into this PoE switch as you want, and it's basically a wireless link to that NVR. So how does it work and how is it all connected now? So as I already mentioned, this is the NVR over here. All you're gonna have to do is connect the LAN port of your NVR into your router. Again, whether that be directly into the router or into a switch which is connected to a router, does not matter, but connect that into your router. And then from there, you've got another LAN port, not the WAN, another LAN port going from the router out into the LAN port of the PoE injector. And then from there, you have the PoE power out to the radio, which is the access point radio. That shoots over here wirelessly to the other radio, which is the subscriber. This one goes into its PoE injector. See the red cable goes into PoE red. And then the LAN port goes into the uplink of this PoE switch. Now whether it actually says uplink on your PoE switch, you'll have to just figure out, but um, most of the time, usually there's just a couple of ports here and you plug it into any which one, does not matter. But in this case, this has a specific uplink port. So then from there, the last thing that we gotta do is plug the camera in. And it can be plugged into any of these ports here on the PoE switch. Once it's plugged in, it should gain power. And unfortunately, this does not have an indicator light or anything like that and able to tell that it's actually connected. But the way that we can do that is going over to the NVR. You're just gonna have to simply go onto your interface. And I do wanna say this may differ depending on your NVR, but for me, this just automatically popped up. So it brought up the feed. However, if it does not automatically detect, all you'll have to do is go to your settings of your NVR. And then from within here, you're gonna wanna go to channels. And usually you can just click on a channel, click the plus button. And then from here, you should see a list of all of your IP cameras. In my case, I've just got the one, but I will connect more later. However, since I've just got the one, you just choose that, click next, and it should automatically log into the camera. At least that's what happens on the Reolink NVR. And just like that, that is how you set up a wireless PoE camera and connect it to an NVR. Now, this is very confusing right here, so I'm gonna go and connect it in the real world now in the location that it's supposed to be set up in, and I'm gonna add a couple of more wireless cameras in the same way, and then I'll talk a little bit more about that as well as showing adding all of the rest. So with that said, let's go and you'll see me next once everything's all set up. And just like that, 24 hours later, we've got all of the wireless cams set up. So these are the current views. I'll show you in just a little bit. These are external views. The NVR is located inside of the house in this case. It's located inside this cabinet. It's connected into the network as we discussed before. So in this case, the network is this switch, uh, which runs up to the router. And then this is just wired in. It's got an IP address from the router, statically assigned. And then it's also got that connection into the network. And then also attached to the switch or the network is that radio that we programmed earlier, which is sending off this network to the other buildings where these cameras are housed. The whole reason, of course, why I wanted to do this is because you can live access these other buildings. And not only that, they also still record to the NVR. So 24 seven, we've got playback to each of the channels. Let me go to one of these cameras. As you can see down here, we've got a bunch of different events labeled, and then we've also got normal. So anytime there's some um, you know, motion down here, you'll see it show blue, which is an alarm, or it'll just do nothing at all, which right now you can go all the way up to recent, and yeah, it's pretty neat how you can go and play back all these things 
because it records 24 seven. Also, these external cameras still retain full quality. So as you can see, this is a camera that's inside right now. It's connected directly to the NVR through the camera ports rather than through the LAN. And you can see me there in the background. It is connected at full quality, eight megapixels, of course, because it's connected into the network, but so are these external cameras. These are also connected at eight megapixels. So this means you're gonna be getting your full 4K quality or whatever the quality is of your camera through these wireless links as if it's active right now. That is the current time. So it is no latency connected as if it's connected directly to the NVR. If you're wondering how many cameras you can put on the remote end of this wireless link, in my real world use, as far as the throughput that I've seen at the most, I've only seen up to 55 megabits per second used on the wireless link at any given time. That's the most I've ever seen. And keep in mind that I have six cameras currently on that link. So that means each camera roughly uses at full 4K quality about 9.2 megabits per second. So if we're just rounding up to 10 megabits per second per camera and you are considering the full 450 megabits per second maximum throughput of these Lightbeam 5 ACs, that means you could have up to 40 cameras on one given link. Now, can an NVR actually support that? And can the wireless link even support that? Probably not, but if you're considering putting like a dozen cameras on a wireless link, you should be able to successfully connect it if you need to. So let's walk outside and I'll show you these camera locations and how I got the external locations hooked up in real world practice. All right, and now we are in building number two. This one is not connected at all to the house except through the wireless bridge. This is my work over here, kind of proud of it. I think it looks pretty good. Ignore all the, the pipes and stuff, but my work comes from over here. That's where the cameras go out of this building, comes into this network switch right there, and right there, as you can see, that's the PoE injector for the Ubiquiti light beam. Something you're gonna wanna make sure to do on your own network if you're doing this is to add a battery backup because if there's ever any outages of power in any of these external buildings, then you're gonna drop out your cameras entirely even if the main building still has power. So it's very smart to add some of those in, but as you can see, this is the light beam, which you've got the outgoing wire that goes to the light beam itself, runs up to the ceiling. Then you've also got the wire that goes to the switch, goes here, and this powers each of the cameras in this building and connects it in through the light beam. You also don't have to stick to just wiring in cameras. An idea that you can also implement into each of your buildings is access points. So I just threw in an old router and threw it into access point mode, wired it into the switch as well, and it is broadcasting the network. So people inside of this building can connect. And now I'm in the third but last building that is connected. Of course, as you would expect, this one's connected with the radio. And this is how that network connected looks like. So we got the radio coming in. It's super windy right now. You gotta see it's kind of shaking around. It still maintains a solid connection, which is very intriguing considering, you know, there can be some pretty high winds sometimes and that doesn't cause the camera to cut out. So that's awesome. That goes into another switch. And this one then powers two cameras. It powers one that goes right over there. And then another one that's inside the building that goes up here on the ceiling. Then it also goes and goes into the LAN port of this, albeit old router. And while that access point may be a little bit old, it is functional in that it allows the sliding giant barn doors here in this building to be connected to a smartphone app. So the employees don't have to go and get out of their vehicles every time they wanna open up the doors. They just simply hit a button on their app and it opens and closes, which is very convenient for them. So other than just getting these simply connected for that, it's not really necessary to have this building covered in Wi-Fi otherwise. And with that, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to let me know by clicking the thumbs up button down below, as well as subscribing for future videos like this from me. Also, let me know anything in the comments that you have questions about, and I'll try to get back to everybody who has questions. Or if you just want to say something random about the video, definitely do so. But with that said, that is it for this one. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.